What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Kicker Scuba and Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor, hit this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are going to be notified every time we upload new content. Now we are on video two of our review of the SSI Dry Suit Diver course. Once again, please do not use this video or any of the videos in this series as a way for you to go out and dive a dry suit. Simply use it as a review session to help you pass your final exam. You still need to seek out your local SSI Dry Suit instructor to get properly trained. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into chapter two. Now to start chapter two off, we need to talk about choosing the proper dry suit for you. And there's many different factors, whether it's how easy it is to repair, what is local at your local training center, or how much can you budget for a dry suit. There's several things that your SSI dry suit instructor is going to go over with you to make the decision making process a little bit easier for you. I would suggest to pick up a dry suit from your local training center because they're going to be that repair center too and they're going to be able to assist you in getting properly sized for that dry suit. Now the next part of chapter two that we're going to talk about is the different types of dry suit, whether it's shell base, which is your bilaminates, your dry laminates, or your vulcanized rubber, whether it's a neoprene, you've got pre-crushed neoprene, and you've got standard neoprene, and then of course you've even got suits that are hybrid models where it's got both materials mixed in together, and then you've even got shell base that's got a neoprene covering over the top. These are more slim line suits in general, and a lot of people like them for their flexibility. So there's many different choices out there. Check with your local SSI dry suit instructor and your local retail center to see what suits they have to offer and which ones you can try on as well. Now there's many different features to a dry suit, but in general, you're gonna have some type of waterproof material, you're gonna have a waterproof zipper, and you're also going to have waterproof seals. Whether it's wrist seals, neck seals, soft seals, latex seals, silicone seals, you're even going to have some type of inflation system. You see, a dry suit basically traps a layer of air around you, and it's still going to be affected by Boyle's Law as we descend below the surface. So we need a way to pump air into the suit. That's what your inflator valve is for. And then, of course, you're going to have an exhaust valve as well to let that air out as we come up. So there's many different features to a suit, and you can add and subtract features. You may want thigh pockets on it. You may want a neck warmer on it. There's several different things that you can add to a suit. Make sure you're checking with your local retail center to see what they offer and what other accessories can come with a suit. The next thing that we're going to talk about is gloves, and there's several different gloves that you can wear, whether it's dry gloves or even standard wetsuit gloves. And yes, one of my dry suits, I wear standard wetsuit gloves with. My other dry suits, of course, I wear dry gloves. But there's several different options out there, and your suit may have the capability of adding dry gloves to it. You'll just need to check with your local retail center to see what suits you have or what suits you're interested in, and the other additional accessories that can be added to it to adapt. Now, there are pros and cons to each each method. If you're using neoprene gloves, they're very easy to pop on and off. And of course, you can put them on and off underwater as needed. Maybe you're in a situation where it's not too, too super cold, but as you descend down below the thermocline, you need to add them on. To wear dry gloves, you're actually going to put those on before the dive actually starts. Now with dry gloves, you're still sealing off your hands into an airtight system. And of course, you're going to need a way to filter air in and out of that throughout the dive. So there's many different options. You need to check with your local SSI dry suit instructor in your local retail center to see what options are available for you. Now the last part of chapter two that we're going to talk about is how do you size yourself for a dry suit. In short, dry suits in themselves should be custom fitted for you. Whether it's a neoprene and you want a loose fit or say even a snug fit or even if it's a tri -lim or a bi -lim where you're needing it big enough to fit thermal undergarments underneath but yet not have it too bulky, you need to make sure that you're properly getting sized for it. I would encourage you to go by your local SSI training center and retail center to get properly suited or fitted for a dry suit. Once you've done that, they can size you, they can send your measurements off and get the manufacturer to make it to fit you so that you're comfortable and safe while diving the dry suit. So guys, that's going to do it for chapter two in our series. Stay tuned. We got four more videos in this series that we really think is going to help you out passing your SSI dry suit final exam. Once again, please do not use this video or any video in this series to go out and dive a dry suit. Make sure you're seeking out your local SSI dry suit instructor to stay safe and comfortable while in the water. But guys, that's going to do it for chapter two. I'm going to go ahead and sign off. Take care. God bless. And I'll see you in the next video.